Hey everyone, Vinayak here. Motherboards are the central hub to everything and mostly the biggest PCB within your desktop chassis. It allocates power, enables communication between the CPU and the GPU, memory and other components. So choosing one is a very important step as it dictates the performance and stability of the entire system. We are looking at a budget X570 or an Elite Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. I am upgrading from my MSI B550M. Does it have any performance gains? Let's find out. Today I have the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi with me, which is surprisingly their budget AMD motherboard offering considering how much it costs. With a wide number of X570 motherboards, making a choice is mind-numbing. As we purchase one motherboard generally during the lifetime of a PC, we have one chance to make a good choice. This motherboard is Ryzen 3000 uh, ready, but I have a 5800X. Hope this works directly without needing to update the BIOS. It does have the QFlash option where you can update the BIOS without needing an older CPU, GPU or RAM. This motherboard is more VRM focused, which is to provide a stable and adequate power to the components providing the best performance without generating much heat. The motherboard follows the PCI 4.0 spec for maximum bandwidth between the CPU and the components installed. It also has a ATX form factor and uses a 4 layer PCB design with an AM4 socket, which supports Ryzen processors from 1000, 2000 and 3000 series. I am actually going to be using a 5000 series processor in this. To use PCI Express 4, you need at least a minimum of Ryzen 3000 series CPU. As I said earlier, the VRM is the core highlight on this board. And with 12 plus uh, 250 amp P core faces, which are organized in a 6 plus 1 phase configuration, the VRMs are all under the heat sinks, which are big and made of metal. We have 4 RAM slots in dual channel configuration and can support up to 128 GB DDR4 RAM sticks. RAM speed supported is up to 4000 MHz but needs a Ryzen 3000 series CPU at minimum. For on-board storage, we have two M.2 slots with support for PCIe 4.0, which means up to 64 Gbps data transfer speeds. Only one heat shield is provided on the motherboard, which has the X570 Aorus Elite branding. A thermal pad is also provided within to help better transfer the heat away from the installed M.2 drive. This location is where we have the X570 chipset and it is actively cooled using a rather well-designed noiseless Delta fan heatsink combo. We have 6 SATA ports which should be enough for most users. The board has 2 single speed PCIe X slots and 2 into 16 slots. Only the one closest to the CPU will provide full into 16 bandwidth, so make sure you install your GPU there. The metallic reinforcement gives the slot more strength as it has to carry the weight of the GPU on it and newer GPUs are getting bigger and heavier. The second slot is capped at only PCIe X4 speed. PCIe X16 should handle most of the latest graphic cards and none of them can completely use up the total bandwidth available so it is guaranteed that you will not have any bottlenecks GPU wise at present. I love that this motherboard has an integrated IO shield which is a great add-on, which is not always available at this price point. For I.O., we have four USB 2.0 ports, four USB 3.2 first-gen ports. The white port is a USB 3.2 port and is also meant to be used with QFlash if you need to update the BIOS without a CPU or GPU. Otherwise, it works like a normal USB 3.2 port. We have two USB 3.2 second-gen ports which support up to 10 Gbps. Sad, no Type-C port is available on the motherboard. We have an HDMI port, which is useless on AMD motherboards until you install an APU. Sound, we have an 8-channel ALC1200 Realtek codec, which is a premium offering with analog surround sound and SPDIF optical outputs available. We also have an analog line-in and mic-in jacks. LAN is only gigabit, would have liked 2.5 gigabit LAN ports, which is a bit disappointing. VMA capacitors are used to make sure you get pristine audio by clearing out any ground or static interferences. On the board, we have front panel USB connectors, type C port, fan connectors, we have four hybrid connectors which can be used for fans, water pumps, and even thermal sensors. We have RGB accents within the heatsink and also on the PCB of the board. And if you need more, of course you do. We have four RGB headers, two of which are ARGB and two are 12 volt RGB headers. Now to upgrade the motherboard. Out with the B550. CPU transplanted onto the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite. Motherboard goes into the cabinet. 
Great that the board has an integrated I.O. shield. Add the A.I.O. mounts. I am using the Deep Cool Gamer Storm Castle 240 RGB. A little thermal paste and mount the pump. M.2 SSD. Install GPU. This is a cool front panel adapter for all the front panel buttons and LEDs. Makes it easier to install. All manufacturers should do this. 24 pin power supply. 8 pin power. Connect the fans. This is a Wi Fi antenna provided in the box. First boot, fingers crossed. And we are in. Benchmarks wise, there was a gain of around 200 points in Cinebench R23. 3D Mark has a small bump of around 111 points. The heat sinks, due to their large surface, do an amazing job of keeping the VRM cool, which is important for overall system stability. Running the board through multiple performance tests, the motherboard stayed stable throughout. Is this the best X570 motherboard? Well, yes and no. If you are looking for a motherboard with all the bells and whistles, this might not be it, even though it might satiate a typical user. But if you are looking for a good budget X570 motherboard with great power delivery and efficiency, the Aorus X570 Elite motherboard will not disappoint. So that was the video. Make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.